So that'll be interesting to look at this question that what might aliens look like? Because we've just been talking about what we're looking for and even where we might look. But what, what does an alien look like? A lot of people say that aliens are supposed to look something like this. At least when I've seen TV shows and movies, a lot of the times they draw aliens like this. You know, these little, sometimes they've been called little green men. You know, something like this that has two eyes and it's still very human looking, I think. Maybe they have a bigger head and a little bit shorter or something like that. But, but why? Why do they have to be looking like us? I mean, we don't know any better. Why do they have to look like us? Maybe they look totally different. In fact, that term, they look totally alien, right? Totally not like us. So it's likely dependent on the environment. That's probably the important thing that we think. So it should depend very likely on the environment where the organism grows. So let's say there's an alien life. It likely depends on where it grows up. So for example, we are on Earth, so we're well-tuned and well-designed for living on Earth. What if you live somewhere that has different conditions? Well, then we think that the life may actually be different from us, fundamentally. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like, that's why I'm not going to bother drawing it. But I do want to talk about some things like low gravity versus high gravity. If you ever heard of gravity, that's the force that keeps you down. That is actually a force of attraction between two objects, well, between any objects, between objects with mass. So the very fact that you have mass, at least we're doing this uh, on a very uh, straightforward sort of simple physics definition here. It gets a little bit more interesting when you talk about uh, particles for mass and things called the Higgs boson, but let's just keep it nice and simple here. So it's a force of attraction between objects with mass. So anything that has mass attracts another object with mass. We say that this force is called gravitation. Now force is a push or a pull. So in our case, for example, we live on the earth, right? And on the earth, let's say we're here, and then there's me, for example. Let's just assume I'm just standing there. So on the earth, because the earth has so much more mass than me, I have a tiny little mass, we both technically attract each other. Right? We, we, we both feel a force of attraction to each other. But I'm really going to feel it because the earth is bigger than me, so it wins, so to speak. It's not quite that it wins. We both attract each other. But this is sort of the reason why I'm going to feel a downwards force you know, towards the center of the earth. So something that has low gravity, it just means that it has low mass. So we could say a low mass planet. So if there's a planet with less mass than us, or a, maybe not even a planet, it could also be a moon. So for example, the moon, like our own moon, there have been people who have walked on it and there it has much less gravity than us. And because of that, they're able to sort of hop a lot. It was a lot easier to move around. So because of that, um, life there may actually be quite different. The life there on a low gravity, for example, um, I mean, they might be long and spindly maybe. So I'll say they could be, whoops, I'll try to write this down properly here. So life, for example, could be long and thin. You know, so maybe like imagine like giraffes are really long, thin animals or creatures or organisms or things. If there's low gravity, it's a lot easier to live that way. But high gravity would be the opposite. That would be a high mass planet or moon, for example. Something that has even more mass than us. Well, then it's a lot tougher to sort of grow and live, you know, because you feel this force always. So because of that, the life on something that has high gravity will likely be, at least we think it could be, um, these will be animals that are probably, you know, short and squat we could say, you know, so things that are, I don't know, imagine like a little hippopotamus or something like that, really low on the ground. So it's a little bit wider, but you know, low on the ground. Whereas these things that have um, low gravity, well, they could probably live to be really tall and thin. So those are some ideas about what life might look like. But we don't really know. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Should we really be so limited to these little sort of aliens like this? I don't know. I think we... I suppose we have to guess something. And people, I think, have tried to imagine them looking a little bit like a human. This is very human-like, I think. Uh, just a little bit different, so that way we could recognize them. But why not be like a giant man-eating plant or some weird thing? I mean, who knows what it looks like? Now, 
this this was kind of fun to do. These next three slides that I'm going to show you, I think, are really fun. Uh, what I did is I just tried to go look at what are the weirdest looking animals on Earth. The reason I did this is just to try to think, well, if we're going to think about what aliens are going to look like, they're going to probably look something totally different than we ever thought of. And look at just on Earth how weird the life looks. So check out this one. So we have so much variety of life on Earth. There's anglerfish, for example. This one has this little sort of uh, this little protrudent here, and I think this one here gives off light that's supposed to attract uh, animals. That's at least what I've read. This one right here, for example, is called the I.I. I. lemur, and take a look at how funny he looks. There's a Dumbo octopus. There's even giant isopods. I mean, that's just weird looking life on Earth. This is very arbitrary. What I did is I just looked around for the weirdest looking animals that I could find on Earth. That's all I did. I just said, all right, what's weird looking animals to me? There was no real criteria other than what does Midge think looks weird? So look at these other weird ones too. So this one right here has, you know, three different sort of horns here. This one right here has all nose. This one is all ears. And this one here looks like it has no nose. Take a look at even some more. There's a Tarsier, that's from Borneo. This is a nocturnal creature, so that's why it looks like it's really surprised. That's just because it lives at night. So if it's during the day, it looks really bright for it. So it's like, wow. It's a viper fish. That thing looks like it has all teeth. Good news is they're really, really small. Uh, and they also live very deep in the ocean, so you're not likely going to ever see one alive. Uh, Yeti crabs, I think that's a really cool name for that one. Even the thorny devil. So if you think about it, we have so much weird looking life just here on Earth. So if we're going to look for life on other planets, what's that going to look like? It may be way crazier than anything we could possibly imagine. So your own idea about uh, uh, what an alien looks like is sure to be just as good as any ideas I could have. Because just look at the weirdness that we have on Earth. Just look at these sort of funny looking animals that we have just on Earth. Look how different they are from each other and how different they are from us. And those are just things found on our Earth. We all share the same chemistry. So imagine then somewhere else where they may have different conditions, maybe higher gravity or lower gravity. Try to imagine what life might look like there. 